Hello my people, how are we doing? Um, let's go ahead and get started on another couple of examples uh, dealing with the power rule and of course um, the exponential. The exponential, let's go ahead and do the exponential first. Uh, it's actually, I mean, there's really not much that you can do with the exponential. Uh, you can do a couple of examples, say, let's say we have x squared plus e to the x. Now I know that when I take the derivative of this, I need to do it term by term. Uh, I needn't get mixed up. So you have dy dx is equal to 2x plus e to the x, right? You deal with this one by the power rule. You recognize that this is an independent term and you do it by e to the x. Now, occasionally books get really tricky or teachers try to get really tricky and they give you this problem uh, probably just to make sure that you understand the difference, right? Well, here's the thing. That's x to the e plus e to the x. Now, e is just a number, right? Now, it's a, it's a transcendental irrational number, you know, 2.718, whatever, uh, all the way out, kind of like pi goes all the way out uh, forever and ever and ever. But it's just a number, okay? So this gets treated by the power rule. Uh, and you say to yourself, well, self, how in the world do I represent e minus 1? Well, you just call it e minus 1, right? Bring the original exponent down and then subtract 1 from the exponent, just like you did with the 2, right? I mean, this right up here is understood to be 2 minus 1, right? Okay, we just don't wind up writing that. We just sort of leave it there because it's an understood 1. And then, of course, this winds up being e to the x. Now, e to the x, uh, and of course, you know, its cousins, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, and all sorts of fun stuff like that, actually wind up making their way in, and it winds up being uh, sort of, when it gets folded into higher, uh, higher, um, not order, because that implies polynomial, but more difficult and more complicated uh, differentiation rules, it winds up being a little bit more robust. Uh, but that's generally uh, what's going on in terms of that. Now, there are times in which you will find, and here's the thing. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about this. Okay. Stop, think, then do, right? That was the motto for last year. So if you're given something like this, y is equal to e to the 2x over e to the x, before you start panicking and start thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, that requires the quotient rule and all sorts of fun stuff like that, please do recognize that that simplifies, okay? Please do recognize that that numerator is that those cancel and that's just e to the x. So dy dx, or in this case we'll just use y prime, is e to the x, okay? And there are so many problems that you're going to run into that actually wind up being capable of simplification and once you simplify it, what is really a nasty, nasty derivative uh, winds up being a very, very easy problem, very, very straightforward, okay? So please, every time you approach a uh, differentiation problem, or any problem for that matter. Stop, think, then do, right? We're not trying to engender habits of procedure. We're trying to, in the midst of learning how to think mathematically, uh, sort of appropriate procedures. But the main goal is the thinking mathematically, so please keep that in the forefront of your mind. So let's go ahead and make our way back to polynomial ones. And let's say I'm given this function and I'm asked for the equation of the tangent line at 1, 4, okay? That's what this abbreviation means. If you ever run into it uh, on a worksheet or anything like that, EOTL, equation of the tangent line. Now, well, first things first, we have to go ahead and take the derivative of this. It's really, really straightforward. It's two terms, and I'm going to get dy dx is equal to 2x plus 3, right? Had to use the power rule here. This was simply linear, so it was just the coefficient. Now, dy dx, okay, if I'm going to, if I'm going to be looking at this, uh, I need to go ahead and evaluate this at x is equal to 1, right? 
I need to go ahead and evaluate the derivative, and this is of course how you would uh, go ahead and evaluate, how, you, how you're showing that you would evaluate it here. Now, uh, you know, I don't know how much of a stickler your teacher is going to be in terms of this kind of notation and being very careful about all, but this is the way your calculator shows it. Uh, when you're evaluating calc when you're evaluating derivatives at a particular value, this is the notation that will pop up on your home screen. So you know, stands to reason that'd probably be a pretty good idea to know it. Okay, now the reason why we have looked for the derivative at one is because if we're looking for the tangent line at one four, we need two pieces of information. Actually, in order to actually write the equation of any line, we need two pieces of information. We need a point and we need slope. So, point, slope. Okay. Now, this is the slope of the tangent line, but it is also the slope of this curve at 5. Okay. Now, in the AP exam, if you're asked for, some, asked for an equation of a tangent line in a free response, you can just put it in point slope form and be done with it. Uh, sometimes they give it to you in a uh, sometimes they give it to you in a multiple choice problem, and of course all the answers are then given, you know, perhaps in slope intercept form, and only then are you required to actually put it in slope intercept form. Uh, but unless the instructions on a free response question specifically tell you a particular form, you are, you are more than welcome to put it here. This is a recognizable form of the equation of a line. Now, let's go ahead and actually take a look uh, at those. Now, this is y is equal to x squared plus 3x. Okay, it's just a nice parabola. And you should, that, that, the shape of it and the location of it shouldn't really be all that big of a surprise. You ought to be able to pull that into a factored form and, you know, know its zeros and understand how it would be if I asked you to put it into vertex form and state its transformations and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Uh, but notice that we have 5x minus 1. And we can go ahead and actually, let's go ahead and zoom in, okay? And once we zoom in, we see right here, okay, at 1, 4, the fact that they touch right there, right where the arrow is. And the line where it touches has the same slope as the curve. That's kind of the whole point of, the, of, of sort of understanding the tangent line, right? And of course, the, how we sort of understand that goes back to the limit definition and the fact that the secant line, when you run, the, when you run that formula of a secant line through a limit as h approaches zero, it becomes the tangent line and gives you the slope of the curve at the point of tangency, okay? So that winds up sort of showing us what went on here in terms of our analytic work. Now, let's go ahead and move on to another couple of problems. Let's say we have y is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2, all of that over x. And you're sitting there thinking, well, we haven't gotten to the quotient rule, Mr. Forth. Oh my gosh, what are you doing? Uh, well, you don't need the quotient rule here. And I'm going to give you a second to uh, figure out why. Uh, this is another one of those stop, think, then do problems, right? The whole thing is, is that is a monomial denominator, which means that I can pull this apart into that, or simplify it according to my needs of being able to use the power rule, and all of a sudden, I can go term by term, and I have dy dx 1 plus 0, and I'm only putting the 0 in there just for emphasis because that is the derivative of the 3, minus 2x to the negative 2, or 1, sorry, 1 minus 2 over x squared. That's the derivative. 
that right there is the derivative of that. Now, if I did use the quotient rule, and I'll go ahead and reinforce stuff like that when we actually do get to the quotient rule uh, in the next section, we will actually do problems like this both ways just to show you that you actually wind up getting the same thing no matter which way you do it. But rest assured that that is the appropriate derivative of the original. That function right here describes the slope of that function at any x value on the domain. And of course the domain for both the original function and the derivative is all values except for zero. Now let's go ahead and do another one that requires us to do a little bit of stop and then think. Okay, So we have y is equal to 2 minus x 2x plus 1, and you're thinking to yourself, ah, well, the last one looked like the quotient rule, but I was able to do something with it. Perhaps this one that looks like it needs the product rule, I can do something with this one as well. And the answer is, is that you can, right? Uh, now, sometimes, you know, those of you who still have a hard time doing the factor or the foiling in your head, uh, you may want to actually, you know, pull this out as negative x minus 2 and 2x plus 1 because sometimes it's easier to actually do the foiling if you look at it like this uh, and therefore it winds up being 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 or negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 2 and that's a perfectly legitimate way to do it uh, either way you're gonna wind up with this you just foil it out right now granted there are some that are really burdensome in order to factor out I mean FOIL out in terms of finding the derivative and there you actually do want to use the product rule but we're not there yet so let's go ahead and do this one uh, we recognize the fact that the negative 2 is going to come along for the ride and so we get negative 4x uh, when differentiating 3x it is just the coefficient because that is your linear term and of course the derivative of 2 is 0 this function right here tells you about the slope of the original at any value of x. And of course this one doesn't have any breaks in the domain. It's a polynomial and as we remember polynomials are continuous on, on negative infinity to infinity, all reals. Okay? Now I would like to go ahead and do uh, perhaps, uh, I'd like to do a uh, tangent line for this one and let's pick a point on here. So we have the equation of the tangent line and let's pick the point negative 1 negative 3 okay now let's verify the fact that negative 1 negative 3 is actually on the curve that would be really nice negative 1 negative 3 if I plug in a negative 1 into this factor it actually winds up being easier to plug it into factored form right plug a negative 1 into here I get 2 minus a negative 1 or positive 3 plug a negative 1 into here and I'm gonna get negative 2 plus 1 or negative 1 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 so we've confirmed the fact that this point is indeed on this uh, this quadratic and of course this quadratic is going to be an upside down parabola uh, and we're going looking at that point so basically what we need to do is we need to evaluate this particular uh, this particular derivative at x is equal to negative one okay and we get a slope of seven now I need two things in order to evaluate or in order to find the equation of a line right point and slope. I have both, therefore in point slope form this would be y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, and of course those are plus because it's minus and negative, and that would be your point slope form of the equation of the tangent line. So really really straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and do one more example. We've already shown uh, that you can use the power rule when dealing with uh, a negative exponent. My next question is, can you deal with, can you use the power rule when you're dealing with radicals? And the question is, I mean the answer is yes, because you have to remember that radicals can be represented as fractional exponents, okay? So that winds up being 2x to the 1 half plus 3x to the 1 third. And if I want to take the derivative, I'm going to wind up, the 2 comes along for the ride, but then when I pull the 1 half down, it cancels, and I'm left with x 
to the negative one half. And the same thing happens with the one third and the three. And when I subtract one from one third, I get x to the negative two thirds. Let's go ahead and have a little fun with this one. Let's go ahead and say that we have we want the equation of the tangent line at the point 1, 5. And if you check, 1, 5 is on the original curve. Plug in 1 into both of those, taking, no matter what root you take, right, the root of 1 is 1, so it would be 2 plus 3, or 5. So that point is on this particular curve. So if I want to actually evaluate the derivative at x is equal to 1, I simply plug in and I'm going to get 1 plus 1, or 2. So uh, as we've seen before, we have point, we have slope, so y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. There is the equation of the tangent line for that particular function at that particular point. Okay. Now, uh, I hope that that is helpful. I don't think that we really have a need to go uh, to a third video on 3.1. So I'm going to go ahead and the next video that I do is going to be on 3.2. If there are any remaining residual questions, I don't have a problem with going back and doing a supplement uh, to, to these 3.1 uh, videos, but I'm going to need to, I think we're done in terms of sort of shoring this up. I think you're going to have to tell me that you want one and I'm more than happy to go back and do it. Cool. All right, well, I hope this helps, guys. If you have any unresolved issues, questions, concerns, feedback, critiques, whatever it is, uh, go ahead and shoot me an email or just leave a comment. Cool? See ya.